this right here is going to be my new home server and it's called the B-Link S13. And after running power hungry home servers for over decades, I finally decided to explore much efficient alternatives like using a mini PC as my home server. Can it really handle the workload? I certainly try to move my services onto this machine. And then in this video, I'll show you exactly what happened when I pushed this machine to the limit. But first, here's a backstory. I've been running home servers for over a decade now. I started my home server journey with an old Dell workstation and ran VMware like some corporate system admin. Then I jumped over to Microsoft Hyper-V and more recently I switched over to Proxmox, which honestly feels like the cool kid on the block these days. My current setup is a beefy Intel 13th gen Core i5 with dedicated Nvidia graphics card. I've also given it 64 gigs of RAM and multiple hard drives for storing data and running a local NAS system. While it's powerful, it's also power hungry. At idle, it consumes around 150 watts of power and then it generates enough heat and noise that it's really noticeable. So that's why I wanted to see if I can move as many of my services over to the mini PC. For this, I'm using the B-Link S13 Mini. This was sent over to me for a review, which I have uploaded here, but since then, it was pretty much a spare PC. This device is tiny, and when I say it's tiny, I really mean it fits in the palm of your hand. But despite its size, it packs impressive specs. It has got Intel N150 processor, which has four cores and four threads up to 3.6 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 512 gigabytes of NVMe SSD with a dual M2 slots, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, dual HDMI outputs, and gigabit ethernet. And also it's got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. And the best of all is that it only consumes six to eight watts at idle and then 12 to 14 watts at peak. That's massive reduction from my 150 watt setup. Now this upgrade is completely optional, but sort of necessary if you plan on running a NAS on this type of machine. Since my plan is to run a NAS, I decided to upgrade my RAM from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes and I also picked up a hard drive enclosure that connects via USB ports. That's right, I'm gonna actually run a full NAS setup on this tiny little machine. And if you are interested on how I did that, drop a comment below. And if there's enough interest, I will make that video. Also, I decided to install two one terabyte NVMe SSDs. In this case, faster SSDs will not have any speed benefits on this device. So I picked up the cheapest and highly rated and reliable SSDs. There were many options when it came to installing the OS. By default, B-Link comes with Windows 11 Pro, which is useless if you're trying to run a server. I was thinking of using Ubuntu Server and install that directly onto the mini PC, but I instead decided to use the Proxmox. I'll skip to the boring setup screens, but if you want a step-by-step -step guide, do let me know in the comments below. And if enough people are interested, I will make a detailed tutorial. Setting up Proxmox was surprisingly easy, way easier than you can think. In just a few minutes, I had the mini PC fully set up with Proxmox and ready to go. And the best part, after the install, I didn't even have to touch the mini PC anymore. I could just manage everything remotely through my web browser. Super easy and super convenient. With the Proxmox set up completely, it was time to install Ubuntu. I created a virtual machine and assigned it four cores. 8 gigabytes of RAM and 80 gigabytes of storage. For the OS, I picked Ubuntu Server version 24.04.2 LTS. It's fast, lightweight, and perfect for server tasks. Setting it up was super simple. Just upload the Ubuntu ISO to Proxmox and install like you would on any other machine. After installation, I logged onto Ubuntu, and yep, it's a command line interface. You're not gonna find any fancy GUIs. If you're used to Mac, or Windows that you might feel intimidated. But don't worry, you can easily install the GUI like GNOME with a few commands. I will link those in the description below. So if you do want a graphical user interface, just run those commands and then you'll have that. In my case, I did do that. All right, so what I'm gonna actually be running on this tiny Ubuntu server. First thing I did was install Docker and Docker desktop. That's basically where the, all the magic will happen. Everything lives inside a container and to keep things clean and easy to manage. The first container I spun up was the Microsoft SQL Server. 
It's running a bunch of my data projects behind the scenes and honestly, it's just been a rock solid. I've gotten jobs hitting the database all day long, pulling and inserting data, updating, and then this tiny box doesn't even flinch. After that, I set up Jellyfin. And if you don't know what Jellyfin is, it's like having your own private Netflix at home. I have this hooked up to my NAS server, which contains all of my YouTube videos and some TV shows and some movies. Streaming wise, it runs perfectly for up to two connections at the same time. I haven't gotten the hardware acceleration working just yet. I'm still working on that. But even without the hardware acceleration, everything streams just super smooth and a couple of connections. I also have WireGuard installed, which allows me to connect to my home network from anywhere in the world. Whether I'm at a cafe or traveling across the country or anywhere, I can easily remote back into my home server by connecting onto the VPN. It's lightweight to configure using Docker Compose. I was able to get this up and running within 10 minutes and getting the ports forwarded and everything. These two other Docker containers I installed were Docmost and Paperless. And I like these because it's all locally hosted. So I own and control all my data. There's no third party access, just pure privacy. Docmost is a free open source replacement to Notion, minus the subscription and cloud dependencies with features like real-time collaboration, diagram support, version history, and having tables. In Docmost, I have all of my video scripts and some personal items. And the most useful thing for me is the help guides that I have created in order to maintain my servers. Next up is paperless-ngx, a document management system that turns your physical documents into fully searchable digital archives. I'm still in the process of migrating my files from my NAS, but once they're in, I can quickly search and find them. For example, I can find my handwritten notes, my receipts, my contracts, or any tax records. With full features like OCR, tagging, and clean web interface, Paperless NGX helps me keep my documents organized and accessible while keeping everything local and private and away from the cloud servers. So in my past roles, I have worked as a data engineer and a full stack developer. I developed and created my own YouTube content tracker with Django. For the front end, I utilized Django's built-in capabilities, ensuring a seamless integration. The back end is powered by Microsoft SQL Server, which I previously set up in the Docker container. Since the application primarily runs in Python, and to maintain this, I created a virtual environment so that everything stays maintained and organized. The application functions flawlessly, enabling me to track my YouTube analytics, capture video ideas, and manage my entire content creation from planning, recording, editing, to publishing. This custom-built app has significantly streamlined my video production workflow, allowing me to focus on my content creation. As a data engineer, I've always been seeking to optimize my process. I decided to set up Apache Airflow, which is a powerful open source platform designed to orchestrate, schedule, and monitor workflows. I mainly use it for YouTube analytics to get data from YouTube API onto my SQL Server on the Docker container. With Airflow up and running, I can automate various jobs such as processing data pipelines, system maintenance jobs, and more. If the job fails, I get an alert allowing me to fix the issue rather than finding out later. In the past, I've never really bothered with the home lab dashboards. They always seemed like such a hassle to set up and maintain, and I would end up spending too much time tweaking everything just to get it perfectly working. But Glance is a total game changer. It's even featured in the recent Tech Hut YouTube video, and for good reason. What makes this dashboard stand out is its simplicity to configure. I can configure everything with a YAML file and just like that, I have a complete overview of my services, of what I'm running. If something goes down or something goes wrong, I know exactly where I can go fix it instantly. Plus, I click on services and it takes me straight to it. So it works like a bookmark as well. For example, if my SQL Server stopped working, which I'll show right here, this immediately updates on my Glance dashboard with server error, giving me real-time insight into the issue. But that's not all. I've added all my favorite tech YouTube channels, financial updates, tech news, world news, and even trending Reddit posts for my Reddits. 
And there you have it. My new 7 watt mini home server setup is officially up and running. It's incredible journey seeing how much power and flexibility you can get from such a tiny and efficient machine. From hosting and running databases, media servers, VPNs, and even custom apps and more, the B-Link mini PC can handle everything without breaking a sweat and all while sipping on minimal power. Now the server fits my use case, but your use case may be different. But if you're thinking about cutting down on power consumption while running a home server, this might be a very good solution. And as always, if you're interested in diving deeper into any part of the setup, whether it's NAS, Prosmox, Docker containers, or anything else, drop a comment below and I'll make sure to make a video for it. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated for more content.